Only one week after Flight 10 worked out great. Elon Musk has figured out the puzzle of the engine explosion. And his idea is super smart. That big explosion almost wrecked Ship 30. But it's actually making Flight 11 happen sooner, in early October. Now SpaceX feels brave enough to try and catch the booster with Mechazilla for the very first time. But here's the part that no one thought would happen. The fix means they have to totally change their plan for Starship's heat shield. And Secret Info says that Flight 11 won't just do the same thing Flight 10 did. It's trying to do something way bigger. What amazing new thing did SpaceX figure out? And why are they suddenly in a big rush to be able to reuse everything? Let's jump right in and see. Elon Musk didn't just fix the explosion problem from Flight 10. He turned it into the best thing for Flight 11. And here's the amazing discovery that nobody saw coming. That huge engine explosion wasn't a mistake at all. It was actually SpaceX's most helpful $50 million test yet. Let me tell you what was really going on during those super important 8 minutes and 52 seconds. When Ship 30 came flying back to Earth at 25 times the speed of sound. One of the Raptor engine's tubes for cold liquid oxygen cracked from the 2000 degree hot air. Think about it like a water hose popping when there's too much pressure. But this hose was spraying super cold rocket fuel into a giant oven. But here's something not many people know. SpaceX took off some heat shield tiles from the windy side on purpose. They did this to show the rocket's weakest spots. This wasn't them being careless. It was a super smart plan by the engineers. By making things break on purpose. They learned information that would have taken 50 very safe flights to find out. How the explosion happened shows Elon's smart idea. First, the main vent for the liquid oxygen broke, which made the methane gas go out a backup hole. With hot air burning through the unprotected stuff around the back flaps, the pressure built up in a really bad way. When the methane and oxygen mixed in that super hot place, boom, a huge flash of light threw broken bits all over the engine area. Most companies would say this was a total disaster. SpaceX just called it a normal Tuesday. Because now they know just how much heat protection Starship needs to really come back from space. They have found every weak spot, tested every way it can break, and proved their computer guesses were right with real info from flying super duper fast. And here's the really smart part. The fix is nice and simple. Covering the whole thing with ceramic heat shield gets rid of the weak spots in the vent system that made it explode. If no areas are showing, then no hot air can get in. No cooling tubes get broken. And no dangerous pressure builds up. Getting the booster back was so, so close to being perfect. The super heavy booster did its flip move perfectly. It did a careful two engine fire up to land. And it hit the right spot in the ocean exactly. The only problem was, it came in 15% too fast, which broke the booster when it hit the water. But that's the kind of small piece of info SpaceX is great at using to make huge new wins. We will talk more about this later. But Ship 30 dropping off its cargo worked perfectly. It let go of eight pretend Starlink satellites on a short trip into space, which showed that Starship can do real jobs for companies. The controlled flip move, which is basically turning 90 degrees from flying sideways to straight up and down, showed that it could land in a very exact spot. But this is only the start. What's really amazing is how this explosion is actually helping SpaceX move faster, toward doing something that has never been done before in the history of spaceflight. But the real story starts when you find out what the info from Flight 10 means for all the other space companies. While Blue Origin was having trouble with simple computer problems, and had to cancel their tiny new Shepard launch two times during SpaceX's big win. Starship just showed that a whole new way of building spaceships works. Here's what's really interesting about when it happened. Blue Origin pushed back its NS-35 launch on August 23rd, saying the booster's computer had problems. Just one day before SpaceX's big flight. When they tried again on August 26th, it was delayed again. This isn't just about who is better at the tech stuff. It shows that they have totally different ideas. About how much risk is okay and how fast you should try to make new things. And here's something that most people don't notice. The fact that SpaceX is willing to let its rockets get destroyed in tests is actually their secret trick. 
The old school space companies spend years just thinking about problems that might happen. SpaceX gets real information by flying through the air at 25 times the speed of sound. Every time something breaks, they learn more than their rivals learn from months of testing on the ground. The money part of this is mind-blowing. And here's the reason why. Flight 10 working after three failures in a row on Flight 7, 8, and 9 is exactly like what happened when SpaceX was first making its Falcon 1 rocket. After three failures in 2008, Elon Musk had to borrow money for a fourth try, which really saved the company from going out of business. That win got them a $1.6 billion job from NASA that helped build the giant SpaceX company we see today. Now, we're seeing the same thing happen with Starship, but the prizes they could win are way, way bigger. These new tech discoveries put SpaceX in a great spot to get jobs for launching satellites, missions to the moon, and plans to build towns on Mars that are worth hundreds of billions of dollars. But there's a small thing that not many people know. The way they test things has become a special advantage that no one else can copy. Think about the problem they have with organizing things right now. Since the test place in Massey is being fixed up for Starship version 3, all the testing now has to happen at the big launch pad. This actually makes each separate test take longer. Changing things on the top part of the rocket takes a whole week to take apart and put back together the launch stand. But it makes them learn everything so much faster overall. Why would SpaceX be okay with something so slow? Because every test with all the parts together gives them info about the whole system. Which testing just one part at a time can't give them. They're not just testing engines or heat shields. They're testing the whole travel system in real-life situations. The other space companies are watching what's happening and are both amazed and scared. Old-style projects like NASA's SLS took more than 10 years and over $20 billion to get to the same point. SpaceX is getting similar results by trying new things very fast. And by smartly being okay with things breaking at the start as a good way to learn. And this is why it changes everything. Other companies can't possibly keep up with them. Without changing everything about how their company works, how much risk they will take, and their ideas on building things. And this is where it gets really, really cool. Based on secret information and seeing the new rocket parts being built. Flight 11 isn't just one more test. It could be SpaceX's first time showing the full cycle of reusing a rocket. Which is what makes it cheap enough to actually go live on Mars. Ship 38, the last of the Block 2 starships, has already passed its super cold tests. And got its other important wing flap put on. Booster 15, which was used before on Flight 8, gives them rocket parts that have already been tested in a real flight. For the biggest goal anyone has ever tried in the history of spaceflight. A full try at catching the rocket with Mechazilla. But here's what no one saw coming from the secret schedule info. How things are going now suggests Flight 11 could launch as soon as October 1st. Maybe just four weeks after Flight 10. This would be the fastest time ever between Starship flights. And it's all because of the smart things they learned from that big, cool explosion. The building challenges are huge. Why would SpaceX risk its best booster on a catch system that has never been tested? Because the old way of landing on boats, even though it worked for Falcon 9, adds extra steps and money that make trips to Mars too expensive to do. Mechazilla is the way to really be able to reuse rockets fast. Maybe getting boosters ready to fly again in just a few hours instead of weeks. And here's what's really amazing. Flight 11 will probably carry up to 20 pretend satellites instead of the 8 on Flight 10. Making the cargo twice as heavy at about 40 tons. Even more important, they might drop these off from a real trip around the Earth instead of a shorter trip. Showing that Starship is ready for real company missions that make millions for each launch. What will happen if the Mechazilla catch doesn't work? SpaceX has thought about this risk very carefully. Even if the try to catch it doesn't work perfectly. They'll get super helpful information about how to fly close to it and guide it for next time. Thinking about the good and bad things that could happen, it makes more sense to try the catch now. Instead of waiting for everything to be perfect, which might never happen. But there's something even bigger going on here that most people don't see. If Flight 11 launches in early October and Flight 12 comes next with the new version 3 parts in December, 
SpaceX will reach their goal of launching every three to four weeks. This fast schedule lets them make quick changes to get to their final goal of launching every day, which they need to do for trips to Mars. What this means for the future goes way beyond what SpaceX wants to do right now. If Flight 11's goals work out, it would prove that getting to space fast and cheap is possible with the stuff we have today. This could make space-based solar power, mining asteroids, building things in space, and exploring deep space happen decades sooner, not generations. And here is the biggest thing to realize. Flight 11 is the connection between the testing phase and the real-world operational phase. If SpaceX shows they can deliver cargo all the time, get their boosters back safely, and get them ready to fly again fast, Starship goes from being a cool test rocket to a travel system that changes the world. That change could happen in just a few weeks. The fix that Elon Musk found wasn't just about the rocket, it was about an idea. By seeing big, cool failures as a great way to get information. SpaceX has made a way of inventing things that other companies just can't copy. And Flight 11 might be the time that this idea finally gives people a way to live on more than one planet. This is exactly why Elon Musk's way of looking at failure has become SpaceX's best secret advantage. What seemed like a terrible explosion was really the key information they needed to be able to truly reuse their rockets. And the fact that Flight 11 is planned for early October proves that it worked. Think about what this means for people's future in space. We're not just seeing small improvements anymore. We're watching the birth of the travel system that could let us live on many planets. If SpaceX can catch the rocket with Mechazilla in just a few weeks, they will have done something that no government or company has ever done before. Quick, airline-like trips to get to space. And this is only the start. Version 3 Starships launching in December, may be flying every day by 2026. And trips to Mars becoming something we can afford instead of just a science fiction story. The big discovery isn't just about the tech, it's about an idea. Seeing amazing failures as a key way to learn has made a way of inventing that old-school space companies just can't copy. Here is what I want to know. Do you think SpaceX will really try to catch the rocket with Mechazilla on Flight 11? Or will they play it safe and land in the ocean again? And more importantly, what kind of business do you think will be changed first? When Starship really starts working all the time? This is future space and we look deep into the new discoveries that are changing our future in space. If you want to hear more that connects the tech details to the bigger picture, you know what you need to do. Because the next few months are not just about testing rockets. They're about opening the door to everything that will happen next. SpaceX's Flight 10 showed us something that had never been seen before. Those orange lines were not problems with the system but proof that Starship's first metal heat shield test was rusting at 25 times the speed of sound. While everyone was cheering for the landing, the engineers found something that could change how we reuse spaceships forever. But why did Elon say these test tiles were useless after they seemed to work so well? What surprising secret does this orange glow really show us? About SpaceX's wild idea for solving the 24-hour reuse problem. That NASA has been trying to figure out for many, many years. Let's jump right in. When Starship's engines turned on for that last landing fire up on Flight 10, most people watching were amazed by the gentle landing in the ocean. But SpaceX engineers were seeing something that would completely change how spaceships are designed forever. Those big orange lines were not system failures. They were the first time people had ever successfully tested metal heat shields that cool themselves while really coming back through the air from space at super high speed. Here is the shocking secret that Elon Musk's warning showed us. At exactly 110 kilometers up in the air, a starship flew super fast through the top of the atmosphere at 25 times the speed of sound. Sunlight rays started breaking apart oxygen into very reactive single oxygen atoms. The special metal test tiles that they put on purpose next to the normal ceramic ones right away started to rust thousands of times faster than anyone thought they would. And here's the thing that changes everything about this test. SpaceX wasn't trying to stop this rusting. They were measuring how much it was rusting. Like Musk explained, the orange color is rust from the metal test tiles rusting very fast. 
but the amazing new engineering happening under that orange surface is what makes this so important in history. Those metal tiles were SpaceX's first try at transpiration cooling, a system that pushes coolant through tiny little holes in the metal surface. Think of it like high-tech sweating, just like our skin lets out sweat through pores to cool our body. These tiles let out coolant through thousands of tiny holes to handle the extreme 1,750 degrees Celsius heat. The orange stuff left over was basically like sweat stains from this cooling process, with rust bits mixing with the coolant and spreading over the ceramic tiles next to them. But here's the detail that most news stories completely missed. 